Hello, everybody. My name is Liana May. It is January 20th, 2012. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning. I tried recording earlier during the day, but there were too many distractions. I'm one of those type of people that get distracted very easily. I have a... a uh, I have a brother. He's almost two years old. He makes a lot of noise in the living room. Uh, anyways, this is a tutorial on how to farm in RPG Maker 2. I've already created a tutorial on how to farm, on how to create farming events, but ever since then I've been able to master the events and make it a little more dynamic and a lot more fun for players to use. Let me give you a little demonstration. I have some seeds in my inventory, and when you use the seeds, it spawns an event right in the middle of the map. You can uh, then you can walk into it like so, and you can control it like a character. Uh, in order to place the event, press the circle button on your controller, and then move out of the way so it can grow. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water. The coolest thing about this event is that <clears throat> while it's growing, you can move your character around and you can do pretty much anything. You can warp out of the town, uh, grind a little bit, you know, have a little adventure and kill zombies or whatever. You can come back to your garden and check out the progress of your plant. And I think that's really cool. In the last tutorial that I created, the uh, the farming tutorial that I created in the past, there was an issue with that um, when you plant seeds or when you uh, plant vegetables, you couldn't move your character around. Your character had to stay in one spot and you had to wait for the vegetable to grow, and that's no fun. So this is a lot, uh, a lot better. You can, you can't harvest the vegetable right now because events need to be refreshed. There are one of two ways you can refresh events. Number one, you can exit the world map and then re-enter the world map. Number two, you can either um, you can talk to NPCs or interact with other events like treasure chests and things like that. There just happens to be an NPC standing here and I can talk to him. <clears throat> so now that I had talked to the NPC, this event in front of me is now refreshed and ready to go. So now I can harvest it. That's the only th uh, negative thing I would say about this is that you have to refresh the event. But it's not a huge deal. It's not a big deal. When you harvest the vegetable, the vegetable goes in, into your inventory, just like that. Even though the event is gone, you can still reuse it. As long as you have seeds, you can keep reusing the event. <laughs> so, there it is. I can, I can keep doing this as many times as I want, as long as I have seeds. And of course, you can probably, you know, buy seeds at your local market or whatever. You can have as many events as you want. In this demonstration, I only have one event. But you could have as many as 20 or 40 events. So you could have as many as 20 or 40 vegetables in your spice garden. It doesn't have to be a vegetable. It could also be a tree. You can grow trees. I'm going to exit out of here. Before I continue with the tutorial, I want to show you an overview of the steps needed, the steps required to take in order to create what I just showed you. So steps one through five, we create var variables and flags. <clears throat> also, um, 
The text in red are variables, the text in blue are flags, and the text in green are events and scripts. I don't know if that makes it easier to read. I hope it does. I tried coming I tried coming up with my own system, like color coding system, and I hope that makes it easy makes it easier for you to read. Um, I'm gonna scroll down. If you need to pause the video, uh, you you can do that if that helps you. Um, gonna scroll down and yeah, you may have to pause the video because there's a lot of stuff here. So it's kind of intimidating because there's a lot of stuff you need to do, but it's actually not that hard. Once once you understand what we're doing here, it's not very hard to create something like this. <clears throat> I did try recording this video several times in the past, but things didn't go so well, so I hope this time it goes well. I didn't rehearse the tutorial, unfortunately. Normally when I create tutorials, I rehearse I rehearse them like I just sort of talk to myself, you know, without the with the microphone turned off. But this time I didn't do that, so I'm just kind of playing it by ear. I'm using this document as a as a guide. I'm going to minimize that and I'm just going to have it off to the side so I can read it as we go along. I'm going to delete this campaign. We're going to start from scratch. Go to File, New, and go to Beginner Mode so that we can load preset data. From the menu, go to File, Preferences, User Level, and switch to Hard Mode so that we can edit the data. <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do is create a variable. So go to Game, Game Settings, go to the Custom tab, and then from there go to the Variable tab. Scroll down until you see Variable 251, and call it Global Timer. This is probably going to be one of the long, uh, one of the longer tutorials that I've ever created. I hope that's okay with you. By the way, I failed to mention this. Let's go to 252 and call it temporary. I failed to mention that alternatively, this could be a tutorial for placing furniture. In this tutorial, I use the same exact method for creating a uh, furniture script you know that video I created um, where I place furniture? Yeah, I. this is pretty much the same method that I use. So not only is this a um, farming tutorial, but it's also a object placing tutorial, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> We're creating a, a vari variable called veg timer. This is going to be a value that's recorded. Uh, it's not necessarily a timer per se, but it's going to be a value based on the global timer. We're going to go to variable 254 and we're going to call that event direction. This is going to be the directional value, the, the value of the direction of the event. I'm so glad I'm not sick. I know it, it might sound like I'm sick, but I'm not all that sick anymore. I used to be coughing a lot, but I'm not coughing, and I'm so grateful for that. So glad that's finally over. Uh, go to the flag tab, 261. We're going to call this Veg Condition. And uh, alternatively, you can also call this veg mode if you want. 
if you're more comfortable. If you've ever played uh, RPG Maker 3, mode would be... Uh, you might be familiar with the term mode, but I'll just call it veg condition, so. All right, so we're done creating variables and flags. On to step number six. Step number six, we create models. So from the menu, go to graphics, object models, create new data. We're going to call this veg... 25% and actually no you know what I'm gonna do 20% because I feel like it <laughs> 20% you can do whatever you want it doesn't matter 20% 25% we're creating instances of the event instances like uh, the size of the of the model the model I'm going to choose is a vegetable, and the ID for that is 16. You can see that under the model, it says 16. And the size is going to be 20%. So it's really tiny. We're going to copy this, paste it. Instead of 20%, it's going to be 40%. And then edit the size, 40. We're going to copy that paste it. Instead of 40%, we're going to make it 60%. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just going up by 20% each time. So we're creating instances of the event. This will probably make more sense later on. 80% and then 100%. The size of events do not refresh on their own. You have to refresh them manually. Uh, the instance of an event has to be refreshed manually via conditions. And what we're doing here is we're creating models of these instances. So we have five instances of the event, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100%. Step number seven is create an item. So let's go ahead and do that. From the menu, go to game, and then go to items, create new data. The name of this item is going to be called seeds. This is uh, going to be the seeds that you use to plant. We're going to come back to this later, but for now, we're just going to uh, create an item and give it a name and exit out. We're going to create one more item, so create new data. And we're going to call this... Um, you can call it whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. You can call it vegetable. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it onion because the model that we chose kind of looks like an onion. So that's why I decided to call it onion. And that's about it. We're gonna update data and exit. We're done creating items. Now what we have to do is we have to create an event. From the menu, go to scripts, events, create new data. Call this... Um, you can call it whatever you like. You can call it vegetable or onion. I'm going to call it onion because the model closely resembles an onion, in my opinion. We're going to come back to this event. For now, we're just going to create it, give it a name, and exit out. The reason why we created an event is so that we can control it through a script later on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create scripts. Go down to scripts, scripts, create new data. The name of this script is going to be called global timer. This is going to be a script that keeps track of time. Global timer. It's going to be an action script. So where it says type, uh, select action. 
we're going to create a repeating branch. So go to script branch repeat. And just leave it as it is, flag, and then uh, the flag that is selected off fixed, and then equals off. So just as it is, you know, save it. So what we're doing here is we created a repeating branch that's going to infinitely repeat forever and ever and ever. That's, that's what it's doing. So inside of that repeating branch, right in the middle, between script branch repeat flag off and where it says script branch end, like right in the middle of that, we're going to go down to other wait and I'm going to decide on 30 frames and the reason why I decided on 30 frames is because we want to keep track of seconds in the script and I read somewhere on the internet that in RPG Maker 2 um, animations the frame rate for animations is 30 frames per second. I read that somewhere. I don't know if that's true, but assuming that that is true, 30 frames would mean... Uh, 30 frames would be equivalent to one second, if, if that's the frame rate. I don't know if that's true. So what it's doing here is it's waiting one second. Wait one second. Now what we have to do under under that we have to record that data. So go to data variable and then right here where it says sample variable 00, zero we're going to select the variable that we created called global timer. Global timer is going to be equivalent to itself. So global timer equals global timer plus 1. So what we're doing here is we're adding one to global timer. So it's counting down one second, it's adding one to global timer, and then it's going back up, and then counting one second, and then adding one to global timer, and it just does that infinitely, forever and ever and ever. It just adds one. Whoops, what did I do? I accidentally exited out. Okay. We're done here. We're going to update data and exit. It does that forever. We're going to create a script, create new data. The name of this script is going to be called register ride. And what this script does is it registers a vehicle. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Registers a vehicle. <laughs> a vehicle, as you might know, in RPG Maker 2, a vehicle or in this case, a ride. We're calling it a ride, but what it really is in RPG Maker 2 is a vehicle. And what a vehicle is, is uh, an event that you can control as if it's a party member. So you know that that black um, plant that we were controlling? That's considered a vehicle or ride. This is going to be an action script. Uh, go down, the first line is going to be, uh, go down to events, movement, bypass objects. Uh, yes. Events, movement, bypass members. Yes. Other, vehicle, set as vehicle, zero. The reason why we have to set the vehicle as um, a number is because RPG Maker 2 doesn't doesn't do it for you automatically. There's no database for vehicles, so you have to manually give it an ID number. You can create up to 100 vehicles, um, starting with the number zero. So we're going to set that as zero. The next line is go to events, effects, size. We're going to keep it at 100% for the x value, 
for the y value and for the z value. For time, it can be any amount really, it uh, depends on your personal preference, but I'm going to decide on 3600 frames, okay? 3600 frames. Um, meaning, remember that, let me whip out, whip out my cal calculator, uh, 3600 frames. If you divide that by 30, because there are th um, 30 frames per second, that would give you 126, uh, 120 seconds. And if you divide that by 60, because there are 60 seconds within a minute, that would give you two, two minutes. So the vegetable is growing uh, in uh, in two minutes. Within two minutes, it's growing from 20% to 100%. Does that make sense? Here's the formula for finding out how many frames you want the vegetable to grow in. Yeah, the, the amount of time. Like, let's say you want the vegetable to grow in five minutes. So what you would have to do is um, you do five times 60 because there are 60 seconds per minute and you get a value and then you multiply that by 30 because there are 30 frames per second and that value 9000 would be the amount of frames so 9000 frames would be five minutes would be the equivalent of five minutes does that make sense so you kind of have to do your own math here but I just decided on 3,600 frames, which is equivalent to two minutes. Okay, we're gonna update data and exit. We're gonna create new data, and I'm gonna call this grow one. The type of script is action, events, effects, size, 100% for all values. The time it takes is going to be a different value. Instead of 3600, it's going to be 2700. So instead of two minutes, it's going to be one and a half minutes. Yeah. Whoops. Copy that. Paste it. We're gonna call this script grow2. And the amount of frames for this is going to be 1800, which is equivalent to, to one minute. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just making instances of the event, of the, uh, of the uh, animation. This is grow three. Instead of 1800, it's going to be 900. 900 frames, which is equivalent to uh, 30 seconds. All right, we're done creating action scripts. Now what we need to do is create a script. Let me scroll down in my document here. Uh, create new data. This script is going to be called use seeds. And what this script does is it applies when you use the seeds. This is basically what happens when you use seeds. Go to events, control, change, new event, and select the event that you created. Uh, I called it onion. You might have called it something different, like vegetable or, you know, whatever. But I called it onion, so new event, onion. Update that. Events, effects, transparency, 100% per, zero frames. And the reason why we're making it transparent is because we're going to move uh, the event... Um, I'll explain that later. Hold on a second. Uh, events, movement, bypass objects. Events, 
Movement, bypass members. Enable that, yes. Events, movement, location, move. The location can be any location. You can create your own town or whatnot. I'm gonna uh, just select preset town. And then uh, select this icon right here. And what that does is it brings you to this little editor. We're gonna warp, or not warp, but we're gonna move the event sort of right in the middle of the town. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but as long as it's visible to the player, it's right there. Oh, I forgot to mention, the reason why we're making it transparent is because we don't want the player to see the event as it's moving. Um, it's kind of optional. You don't really need this. There's there's no real reason for it to be there, but it's kind of like a personal preference. I don't I don't like it. I don't like the event to be visible right there and then. It will be visible, but uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to warp the party. We need to teleport the party. Um back into the town. I know that seems kind of weird, but the reason why we do this is so that the event can refresh. It kind of sucks that we have to do this, but that's the only way to refresh events. You know, so that it doesn't bug out. Uh, not really sure how to explain this. But, okay, so we're done with this. <laughs> Let's see... Oh yeah, uh, step number 14. Now what we have to do is create an event. So go to Scripts, Events, Create New Data. The name of the event is going to be... Uh, in the document I called it Vegetable Apply. But instead of Vegetable Apply, I'm, I'll call it Onion Apply, since the event is called Onion. Uh, oh wait, no, no, no. <sighs> uh, I wasn't paying attention. It's uh, it's called Use Seeds. I'm sorry. The event is called Use Seeds. I was looking at something else. Ugh. I have to pay more attention. Okay. This is going to be a system event because... The reason why it's a system event is because we are going to apply this event to a direct effect. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, right here where it says apply, we are going to select a script called use seeds. That's the script that we created. We're going to update that and exit. Exit out of there. We're going to create a script. So go to scripts, scripts, create new data. And in the document, I called it vegetable apply. Instead of vegetable apply, I'm going to call it onion apply, since the event is an onion. And you can call it vegetable apply if you want, if that makes more sense for you. Or you can call it event apply. As long as you know what it is, that's all that really matters. The first line is script call script, we're going to call a preset script called control horse, and the ID for that is 0222. Um, alternatively, you can create your own uh, script. It's not really needed. You can use the control horse script. Um, or you can copy it and, and modify it if you wish. Uh, the next line is data variable veg timer. So this is the variable that we created. Veg timer is equivalent to global timer. And what, what we're doing here is we're capturing the value of the global timer and entering it into veg timer. So whatever the global timer is, at that instance, it's going to take that value and put it into veg timer. 
Um, the next thing that we're going to do is go to Data, Flags, select a flag that we created called Veg Condition or Veg Mode, whatever you called it. You, you might have called it Veg Mode or Veg Condition. And we're going to turn that on. And the purpose of this flag is to... Um, when you, when you uh, take control of the plant or vegetable and you press the circle button in order to place the event, it, um, this flag determines whether or not you placed the event. Does that make sense? So if it's off, it means that the event was never placed. If it's on, it means that the vegetable was placed. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Update data and exit. It, it's, a, it's, not, it's not really that complicated. Uh, so, update data and exit. I try to find the best words to describe what I'm trying to show. I'm not very good with words, though, however. <laughs> so, uh, the next thing that we are going to do, uh, create new data. This script is going to be called Harvest Vegetable, or Harvest Onion. This is what happens when you harvest the onion, or the vegetable. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here. The first thing that we are going to do is change the value of a variable. So go to data, variable, and we are going to select a preset variable called member order. And the ID for that is 53. This is not a, var a variable that we created. This is a variable that's um, in the system. Like, it's pre-made, like a preset variable that's already created for you. Member order is a variable that keeps track of the order in which party members appear in the party. And we are going to set this to zero. Update data and exit. We're gonna create a script branch, a uh, repeating branch. Script branch repeat. Variable, select member order. Again, the ID for that is 53. And it's going to be not equal this symbol right here is uh, not equal to 4. As long as the value is not equal to 4, it'll keep repeating. Uh, the script will repeat in this branch infinitely, unless the value is 4. Then it'll, once the value is, is uh, 4, it'll come out of the repeating branch. Inside of that repeating branch, we are going to enter uh, data, member info, uh, use member order. And what this does is this takes the member order variable and it identifies the member it's kind of hard to explain, but whatever the member order number is, so in this instance it would be zero, it uses that number and it identifies the character whose member order is zero. So member order zero just means that they're the first party member to appear in the party. And data member info change to member order, what that does is it takes the first party member and it identifies him or her. Um, I really hope that makes sense. Uh, it's it's a lot easier than it sounds. I'm I'm making it difficult. 
because I, I, I'm, not, I'm not very good at explaining things, but I really hope that makes sense. Uh, if, you, if you have trouble with it, you can always um, write to me and I'll try my best to explain it. I had a bit of trouble with this before, but uh, the next thing that we are going to do is go to data member info load. So what it's doing here is it's taking member info, it's identifying the party member in the party, and it's loading information such as the amount of items that they have in their inventory. That's going to be important because we want to make sure that their inventory is not full. If it is full, then they won't be able to harvest the onion for obvious reasons. I mean, why would you be able to if your inventory is full, right? Let me scroll down on my document. Uh, let's see. We're going to create a script branch condition variable. I'm going to try to find a variable. Give me a second. Uh, total, what is it called? Total member item. Here we go. The ID for that is 87, total member item. And what this variable, what this variable keeps track of is the total items that, that a uh, specific member is carrying. And what we want to check to see is if total member item is not equal to 12. And the reason why we want to check to see if total member item is not equal to 12 is because 12 is the maximum items any member can carry. In RPG Maker 2, uh, a, a party member can carry a maximum of 12 items. Okay, so if it's not equal to 12, then that means that their inventory is not full. The next thing that we're going to do is go to events, movement, bypass objects, yes. Event, movement, bypass members, yes. I know it seems kind of weird that we're doing this, but the event is going to move out of the way once we harvest the plant. In order for it to move, we want to ensure that it can bypass objects and it can bypass members. Otherwise, it's going to be stuck, uh, you know, somewhere, and we don't want that. The next thing that we're going to do, right under bypass members, yes, uh, go to data, target, basic info, item, and select the item that you created. You may have called it onion or vegetable or carrot or whatever. I called it onion. And we're going to add that to their inventory. And uh, go down to data, flags. Scroll down until you see veg condition or veg mode. This is the, the flag that we created. And we're going to turn that off. And the reason why we're turning it off is because, um, well, yeah, this, this flag determines whether or not a plant has been placed. And since we're harvesting the plant, it's going to turn off because it's not being placed anymore. It's being harvested. Does that make sense? Go to effect, uh, events, effects, transparency, 100%, and then the time, um, the amount of frames that it turns transparent, uh, it doesn't really matter, I'll just, I'll uh, decide on 10 frames, it doesn't really matter how many frames, 10 frames seems good. And then the next thing that we're going to do is go to script, force script end. The reason why we do force script end is because, excuse me, 
is because we're going to add more to the script and we want to make sure that it doesn't uh, that it doesn't go down to the next part of the script. Um, let's see. I think... Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Right at the very, 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 very end, outside of the condition, outside of the branch, right here where my cursor is, or where the green line is, we're going to add data. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, outside of the condition, inside of the branch, um, we're going to add data variable and select member order equals member order plus one and the reason why we do that is so that we can go to the next member if their inventory is full it's going to check the next member in the party to see if their inventory is full. And if their inventory is full, it's going to go to the next member. It's going to keep doing that. And, uh... Yeah. It's going to keep doing that until member order equals 4. And if it equals 4, it's going to exit out of the repeating branch entirely. So outside of that branch, you see where it says script branch end? Right outside of that, we're going to um, create a script branch condition flag. Let me see if I can find the right flag. Okay, this is a flag called item bag. The ID for that is 34. And we want to check to see if this is on. Item bag is a flag that determines whether or not you're using a bag. In RPG Maker 2, you can use a bag that allows you to carry more items. If you don't have a bag, then your inventory would be full by default. But if you have a bag, it's important to to check to see if you're using a bag here. Inside of that branch, uh, inside of that condition, um, go down to data, game info load. What this does is it loads game information such as the amount of items that you're carrying in the bag, okay? We need that information to see if your inventory is full. Under that, under game info load, we're going to create a condition variable. Uh, it's a vari variable called total items. Let me see if I can find it. Total items. Oops, wait. Ugh. Okay, what we want to select is total items. There's, there are two variables, total bag items and total items. These are two completely different variables that keep track of two completely different values. Total bag items is the total amount of items that you have in the bag, and total items is the total amount of, I of any... Total items is the total amount of any one type of item that you have in the bag, okay? You understand the difference? They're two completely different variables. So, so if you see this, select total items, that's the variable that we want, not total bag items. So be cautious of that. They kind of look the same and sound the same, but they're completely different. So total items... We're trying to check to see if total items is 
equal to 99. And the reason why we are checking to see if it's 99 is because uh, if you have a bag in, in the game, you can carry up to 99 items, uh, any one type of item, in your bag. And if you have 99 items, it means that your inventory is full. So what this condition is basically saying is if your inventory is full, then it's going to uh, display a, a screen, dis screen display text message. Um, your... I hope I don't run out of memory here. I'm running on 45 minutes. Whoops. Your... Uh, oh, I'll just I'll just say can't can't harvest. How's that? Normally, it would say something like uh, you can't. Um, it would say it would normally say something like um, your inventory is full. Can't carry any more items or something. But I'll just. I'll just say can't harvest. So, so there it is. We're gonna copy this condition right here, checking to see how many total items you have in your bag, and we're gonna paste it outside of this of that condition right here. Do you see that? So here's a con here's a condition that's checking to see if your inventory is full. And this condition right here is going to check to see if your inventory is not full. So it's the opposite. So instead of equal, select the not equal symbol. Not equal to 99. So that means that your inventory is not full. And of course, if it's not full, it'll give you the item. Let me scroll down here. This is such a mouthful. Um, events. Movement, bypass objects, enable, yes. Events, movement, bypass members, enable, yes. Party, possessions, item, add, onion, or whatever you called it. You could have called it vegetable or whatever. I called it onion. Quantity, one. We're giving them one onion. And then under that, go to data, flags. Select the flag that we created called veg condition, or you might have called it veg mode. And select off. Events, effects, transparency, 100% in a matter of 10 frames. So it's going to disappear in 10 frames. Um, let's see. Let's, uh, wait a minute. We're going to copy this condition right here uh, where it says script branch condition item bag equals on copy that and I think at the very very end we're gonna paste that right here edit this condition instead of on we're gonna select off so it's saying if you don't have a bag if you don't yeah if you don't have a bag then I'm going to copy this text message right here where it says text message can't harvest and I'm going to paste it right in between here uh, right in the middle of that uh, script branch where it says item bag equals off can't harvest oh boy we are done with that script um, so let me explain this really quick. Uh, it's going through each member in the party to check to see if their inventories are full. If it's not full, it'll give them an item. 
If, if it is full, it'll check to see their bag, to see if their bag is full. And if their bag is not full, it'll give them an item in their, ba in their bag. And if it is full, it'll say can't harvest. See, it's very simple when you explain it like that, but it's very, it seems very complicated. See how long this is? But, uh, it's probably one of the longer scripts. I'm so glad we got that over with. Okay, step 17. We are going to create condition scripts. Create new data. This is going to be called veg condition. Or veg condition. I'm calling it veg condition. Condition is a word I made up sh that is short for condition. Veg condition. Oh, veg condition one. That's kind of a tongue twister, isn't it? The type of uh, script is a page condition. I'm not normally used to making page conditions, but for this instance, we're gonna make a page condition script. Script branch condition veg condition on. So this is what happens when you place the event and it's going to check to see if you placed the event. That's what this flag is for. It keeps track it determines whether you've placed the, the event or not. So if it's on, it means that you've placed the event. So if you have placed the event, go to uh, right inside of that script branch, go to data variable. I'm hungry, I don't know why. I, I just ate and now I'm like hungry again. <laughs> script branch condition, uh, I mean, ah, data variable temporary equals global timer minus veg timer I'm gonna explain what this does okay so temporary is just a temporary uh, variable it's a temporary value what we're doing here is we're capturing the value of global timer and we're subtracting it from veg timer. The global timer is always changing. It's constantly changing. It's always adding, you know, value. It, it's increasing in value all the time. Veg timer, however, is not increasing in value. It's like a, it's a, it's a fixed value, like a, like a solid value. In another script, we captured the value of global timer and entered that into veg timer. So let's say, for example, that five minutes have passed. So veg timer um, will have been five minutes. Let's just say, for example, global timer is always changing. So global timer can be any value above five minutes. It can be 10 minutes. So if temporary is equal to 10 minutes minus 5 minutes. You know, that's just an example, but update data and exit. <clears throat> We're going to create a condition, script branch condition variable temp uh, temporary, which is the flag that we created, is greater than or equal to, and then from here, you can enter in any amount that you wish. But I think I had decided on... What was it? 30... Uh, 900... 30 seconds... Oh wait, no. Uh, 30 seconds. Okay. So this value right here, 30 is representing the amount of seconds. So temporary, if temporary is greater or equal to 30 seconds, and then in the middle of that uh, script branch condition, we're gonna go to data, flags, 
scroll down until... Uh, oh wait, scroll... Scroll down until you see... Uh, satisfy page. There it is. Satisfy page. The ID for that is 060. Satisfy page on. And what that does is if if satisfy page equals on, then it'll continue to uh, to use. Oh man, how do I explain this? Uh, I'm not really sure how to explain this. See, events have their own conditions. And if satisfy page is on, it means that conditions have been met. That's that's all it means. It just means that conditions were met. I hope that makes sense. Update data and exit. We're gonna copy that and create more conditions. We're gonna copy veg condition one, paste it. We're gonna edit the name. Instead of veg condition one, we're gonna call it veg condition two. And then right here, where it says script branch condition variable uh, temporary greater than or equal to 30, we're going to edit that and save uh, temporary equals or greater than 60 seconds. Update data, exit. Copy that, paste it, veg condition. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Oh, man. Did I, uh... Okay, I'm back. I had to stop the recording because I was getting a little bit hungry. Uh, had an appetite for the munchies. Uh, we're, we're making a, a script called Veg Condition 3. And right here where it says script branch condition, variable, temporary, equal or greater than, instead of 60, it's going to be 90. Copy and paste. This is the last condition. <coughs> condition four. We're gonna edit the same condition. Instead of 90, it's going to be, um, 120, yeah, 120 seconds. All right, so uh, step 19: scripts, events, and oh, we already did 19. I, I. Uh, Step 19 is to create a system event called use seeds, but we already we already did that. Uh, now what we have to do is create a new event called global timer. <clears throat> Down here where it says motion, select the script that we created called Global Timer. And that's it. So update data and exit. <clears throat> uh, let me s hold on a second. Edit event. Okay. So this event right here, onion, you may have called it something else. You may have called it vegetable or whatever. We're going to go ahead and edit that. The uh, display... Oh yeah, there, w there was one model that, I, that uh, I forgot to create. Let me update data and exit. Let me go uh, from the menu, uh, go to graphics, object models. I'm going to copy this veg 100%, paste it, and I'm going to make the color black because this this model right here will determine if the vegetable um, this model is going to represent the vegetable not being placed like 
yeah. <laughs> Let me call it, uh... Black. Okay, <laughs> um... Let's go to scripts, events, onion. You see up here where it says page? Page zero slash zero? That's the instance... That's what I call the instance of an event. In RPG Maker 3, it's called mode. In RPG Maker 2, it's called page. So... Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so the model is, the type of model is object, veg, uh, 20%, oh wait, no, 100% black, yeah, motion is going to be the script that we created called register, register ride zero. The start is equal, the start uh, script, where it says none, right here, is going to be double vehicle. This isn't a script that we created, it's a preset script. The ID for that is 0220, double vehicle. What this script does, it, it ensures that you won't control more than one vehicle. It's optional, you don't really you don't really need it, but I do recommend it. <clears throat> and the apply is going to be the script that we created called onion apply or vegetable apply or whatever you called it. We're going to create a new page. This is going to be the first instance. Oh yeah, in the condition is going to be a flag. Select the flag that we created called veg condition. <clears throat> Off. Now go to page one and uh, the model will be object Veg, 20% motion, um, grow one, uh, condition, change condition to script, <clears throat> and then right here where it says script, select the script that we created called veg condition one I think I think that's the one let me uh, let me make sure that's the right one scripts this is saying okay yeah so <clears throat> um Let me undo that. Uh, we have to create another instance of this. Um... Damn. I think the motion for this will be register ride zero. I'm going to make a new instance. Okay, so where it says condition type, change it to script. And uh, go to uh, select veg condition one. Display type object model forty percent motion grow one. Let me go back to page one, and the f uh, flag that needs to be turned on is veg condition. So right here, on page one, make sure this, uh, make sure you set up this condition here. 
We're gonna copy this, paste it. Page three. Instead of Veg Condish 1, it's going to be Veg Condish 2. Uh, veg 60%. Row 2. I feel like I'm missing something. Ugh. I hate that feeling. Copy, paste, go to page 4. Go down to Veg Condish 3. Row 3. I was supposed to make uh, four grow scripts, but I only made three. So we have to go back and change that. Let me, let me just... Right here, uh, page four, <clears throat> select veg 80%. I was wrong, we don't need to create uh, four growing scripts. We only need three. Because the fifth page is going to be veg condition four, but it's not gonna have a motion because it's going to be the last instance of the vegetable, meaning that the vegetable is going to be fully grown. So we don't need a grow, uh, a grow for script. Start is going to be examine. The apply is going to be harvest onion. So this is what happens when you harvest the onion. And let's see. Okay, we're done with this event. From the menu, go to scripts event placement. Preset Town, Edit, and you can you can pretty much place the events anywhere you want. It doesn't really matter. So the onion, I'm just gonna place it here, and the timer. Uh, you have to place the timer too, by the way. That's important. I'm placing the timer here. Again, it doesn't really matter where you place it. Just as long as you place it there. The timer, as long as the timer is being placed. As long as the timer is on the world map, it will count down the seconds and... Yeah. <laughs> Update data and exit. Step number 23, create a direct effect called use seeds. Okay. Game, direct effects, create new data. The name of this is going to be use seeds. And the custom settings tab, type other. I'm not really sure what this does, but I'm guessing, yeah, I'll just select other. I don't really know what that does. Let's go to the advanced tab. Where it says consume, select, let me see if I can find it. Uh... Consume item 1. This is a script that we did not create. It's a preset script. The ID for that is 0062, consume item 1. And what that does is it consumes the seeds. It, it uh, subtracts one seed from your inventory. And normally we would have a check start to check to see if, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Like, you can have a maximum of events that you can call forth using seeds. If you use seeds, events will be spawned into a, an area, but there's only a maximum of of events that you can spawn. So normally what you would do is you would create a script that would check to see if you had reached that maximum, uh, reached that number. 
like let's say you you have a maximum of five uh, events that you can call forth the check start event would check to see if you already have five events on the map but uh, I'm gonna skip that because um, this tutorial is uh, is uh, is already long enough so result success select um, use seeds that's the system event that we created and update data and exit step number 24 we're gonna go down to game items seeds edit go to the custom tab go down to used where it says direct effect select the direct effect that we just created called use seeds so this is what happens when you use the seeds okay now we're gonna do something uh, we're pretty much done at this point if you test it out it should work let me let me do that I'm so anxious. Ugh. I'm anxious to find out if this will actually work. I don't... Oh wait, I didn't give myself any items. Let me go to Game, General Settings, Custom, Items. Let me delete this. Or get rid of these. I don't need these. Okay, let me scroll down. Seeds. I'll just give myself 99 seeds. This should work, okay? It should work. I really hope it works. <laughs> I'm using the seeds. Ah! Spawns the event. We can take control of it. Press the circle button to place it. Get out of the way. And it takes uh, two minutes for it to grow. So we'll just wait here for a couple of minutes. So, uh, I guess I'll just take this time to talk to you. Uh, how are you? Mr. or Mrs. Subscriber. Or if you're not a subscriber, I, I hope you're doing well. Now that sounded weird. I hope you're doing well regardless, even if you're not- if- even if you are a subscriber or not a subscriber. Ah. People on YouTube are so biased, you know? They say that they'll only do certain things if they get subscribers. And you know I'm not like that. Even if you're not subscribed to me, I'll still be happy to do things for you. As long as you're willing to watch these videos, I'll pretty much do whatever. Um, it's growing very slowly. It's gonna take two minutes for it to grow. Um... What is there to say? Hmm. I changed my, uh... I changed my channel logo. So that's pretty cool. I gave my... Excuse me, I gave my uh, logo a helmet. I don't know if you can notice, but my channel logo is a seal. Like a, a harp seal. A harp seal. Oh yeah, notice how my character is going right through the event. You see how he's just walking right through? If you don't like that, you can change that if you want to. In the uh, action scripts that we created called Grow 1, Grow 2, Grow 3, those scripts, you can make it so that um, if you go to Events, Movement, um, Events, movement, bypass members, no. Enable, no. Okay, it looks like it grew. We can't harvest it right now because we need to refresh the event by talking to an NPC. So I'll talk to this guy and go back to the, to the vegetable. Oh, that's problematic. Okay. Something is definitely wrong. Let me go back to the event. 
Um, let me pause the recording. Hold on a second. Okay. I found a way to remedy the situation. You know how when you harvested the uh, vegetable, it turned black? The reason why it turned black is because of uh, a flag called Veg Condition or Veg Mode uh, turned off right after you harvested the vegetable. In order to uh, remedy this uh, situation, go to Scripts, Scripts, where it says Harvest Onion, Edit. This is a quick solution, um, but let me see. Uh, okay, right here where it says Transparency 100%, right under that, go to Events, Movement, Location move, preset town, select that icon, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move the event as far away from the village as possible. Okay. We're going to copy that. There's another instance where, you, we, where we would have to insert this. Uh, there's another thing here where it says transparency equals 100%. Right under that, paste that location move. So that should be a quick solution. So one, once you harvest the vegetable, it should just disappear. And that's about it. We're pretty much done with this. So if you want, you can go ahead and play around with it and have some fun. However, there are some more things that we could add to this um, event to make it a little more realistic. Step number 25 is um, a script that we would create. Let's go to scripts, scripts, create new data, and call this save orientation. And what this script does is it saves the direction. You can call it save direction or save orientation. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what this does is it saves the direction of the event because by default the orientation is not saved. So in other words, if you were to exit out of the map and re-enter the map, the direction uh, where, where the uh, event is facing will be changed, which is uh, a bit problematic. So what we have to do is we have to save the um, direction, directional value or whatever. Go to data, game info, load. Um, yeah, the reason why we're loading game information is to load the uh, party direction. That's that's what that's the information that we need. The direction that the party is facing. Under that, go to data, variable, select the variable that we created called event direction, and that's going to be equal to party direction, which is the direction that the character is facing. The ID for that is 085, party dir, and dir st stands for direction. And that's it. Um, so save that, update data and exit. We're gonna create a new script called load orientation. And what this does, well, it does exactly what it implies. It loads the orientation. You have to record the directional value. I keep saying directional value. I don't even know if that makes any sense the directional value of where the party's facing, you save that information, and then when you enter the world map, it loads that information. Right under here, we want to go to uh, event control, change, new event, onion. That's the event that we created. It's, take, it's taking control of the onion, Go to events, control, event info load. And I think what that does, I'm not entirely sure, but I think what that does is it 
loads the directional value of the event. So if it's facing west, it'll know that that event is facing west. Or... Or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> Script branch, sort, variable, event, direction, which is the variable that we created. Inside of that script branch, we're gonna go to script branch apply if zero. Zero is equivalent to east. Zero is the value of east. So if the value is zero, then event move uh, change direction, change, uh, direction change east, zero frames. Script branch to end. We're gonna copy these three things. So apply if, direction change, script branch to end. Copy those three things and paste it right here, right under to end. And instead of zero, it's going to be two. Um, direction, it's going to be east, uh, south, sorry. So zero east, two south, copy this, paste it. Instead of two, it's gonna be four. Instead of south, it's gonna be west. We're gonna do one more, so apply if, direction change, to end, copy those, paste it right under where it says to end, and instead of four, it's gonna be six, and then this will be north. Okay, step number 27. We're so close, so close to the end. There's a script called Control Horse right here. ID 222. Edit that. You know what? Let's go ahead and name it something else. Let's call it Control Veg. Because we're not controlling a horse, we're controlling a vegetable. Seems kind of weird. And, uh... <clears throat> right under... This is very important. Right under where it says... Other vehicle control vehicle. It has to be under that. What we need to do is go to script, call script. And then select... Save orientation. So make sure it's under control vehicle. So right when they press, right when the player presses the circle button in order to place the event, it's, it saves the uh, direction of the party and enters it in to the event direction, which is the variable that we created. Okay, step number 26, create a script called enter map. Um, script call script load orientation. Update data and exit. Now we have to create an ev a system event. Create new data. Call this uh, enter map. It's a system event. So where it says type, select system. Where it says apply, select enter map. Update data and exit. The last thing that we need to do is from the menu go to graphics world organization, preset town, script, enter map, where it says enter map, select enter map, which is the system event that we just created. Okay. Whew. This is probably the longest tutorial I've ever created. 
We should be done with this now. Let's go ahead and... What was that? It just glitched. Did you see that? That was weird. Okay. Let's wait about 30 seconds. I'm gonna wait 30 seconds, and then what I'm gonna do after 30 seconds is I'm gonna uh, exit the world map and then re-enter, and we're gonna see what happens. This is the same method that I use to create uh, furniture, furniture placement, and the orientation of furniture has to be saved and loaded. Otherwise, it might not be in, in the direction that you would want it to be in. It's about 30 seconds now, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit and re-enter and check it out. I think the vegetable uh, refreshed. I think. I'm entirely sure. Is it growing? Should be. I wish I could zoom in. You can create uh, zoom in and zoom out scripts. Um, in RPG Maker 2, you have to create pretty much everything by scratch. Which is... it has its pros and cons. It's a good thing and a bad thing. It's bad because, it, you know, for a beginner, it, it's a total nightmare. But it's very good for advanced, hardcore players. Because they can pretty much create whatever they want. I'm not entirely sure, but I think the event refreshed. I think it did. See, y you see how the vegetable is bigger? So, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Oh yeah, I forgot one more thing. We need to harvest the event. Harvest the vegetable. We haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna wait a few more seconds, and then I'm gonna go ahead and harvest the vegetable. Also, be aware that, um... What was I gonna say? Um... Oh yeah, be aware that the global timer only works in instances where it's placed. So, for example, I've placed a global timer in this world map. However, if I exit the world map, the global timer stops. So what you have, what you would have to do then is you would have to place the global timer in all world maps. You would have to place it inside of uh, dungeons, inside of buildings, and all that. Okay, so it's fully grown. I should be able to harvest it now. Uh. Oh, there it is. Onion. Verk has the onion. I can use the seeds again. By the way, that glitch that it does, you, you know how it freezes for a few seconds? That can easily be resolved. Um, there are a number of ways you can resolve that. Uh, you can fade the screen out, uh, fade, it, fade it out to black so that the players don't see the glitch. It's kind of like a, uh, yeah, a remedy for that, for that problem. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. You're a real trooper for watching this for an hour and a half, I'll tell you that. I don't think I would ever stand watching a tutorial for an hour and a half. Uh, thank you so much for watching, uh, if you've gotten this far. Um, see you later, bye. Uh, so in my inventory I have seeds, and then of course you can use the seeds, and when you do that, it screws up, just like that. So now I have to redo everything.